Well now, Cube 2 is out. This could be interesting. So, back in the day, Cube 1 came out, and I feel like it was one of the first games to come out in, like, the post-portal, like, puzzle game popularity thing, where, like, you do first-person puzzle sections in, like, artificial chambers, and, like, that that's, like, a whole trend now with a lot of indie games, is Valve kind of created a template that a lot of people could use. And it was such an interesting game for a number of reasons. In particular, it had just the strangest story, not in the game itself, but of how the, the game itself was evolving over time, both within its campaign and then after it was made, when it was re-released and stuff like that. Because in the campaign itself and in its post-release, there was almost like a... I'd almost describe it as like a lack of confidence. Because like there was the, the core mechanic at the beginning of the game, and then there was multiple... Like after the beginning part of the game, there was like a central like third of the ch of the campaign where they would throw out the original mechanics and just start playing with new mechanics, and then they throw those away and start with new ones, and throw those away and start with new ones, and then you get to the ending of the game and suddenly they throw all of the stuff from the middle out. They go back to the beginning part and they start iterating on that, and that was what that was probably the best part of the whole game, is when they iterated and expanded upon. The beginning part, because the beginning part had you moving, had interacting with specific pre-existing spots, and the end of the game had you assigning those spots beforehand, and then then interacting with them. So you were having an extra level of control, and they were iterating. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, that was weird. How in the middle part they did a bunch of weird random things, but then things got weirder because the game had no narrative. So they re-released a director's cut because people complained about the lack of story. And so they kind of just added voiceovers that play almost like a podcast over the main game that I think was largely unaltered. So suddenly the game had a narrative retroactively fitted over it when it didn't have one for years. It's it's odd. But I I, I want I've been really looking forward to this coming out and le and seeing how it turns out just cuz I want to see like after they've made various mistakes and learned and taken audience feedback, but also like put out a whole game in the past now, I'm just really curious what a second attempt looks like. Because they ser they have potential, but there's so many weirdnesses about the last game surrounding it. And you can see that on my channel or check it out on Steam, because I've uh, covered that like a year ago or something, I think. Time to have that play, huh? So we're on some kind of planet. What the hell? I guess we must not be wearing a mask because we're covering our eyes. Anyone help me? I take it the alien planet with no space helmet is not working out.
is Commander Emma Sutcliffe of the Vitruvius mission. I am stranded in an unknown location following mission success. Are there any survivors out there? Hello? This is Dr. Amelia Cross. I, I'm, I'm picking up your signal. I repeat, I am reading you clearly. Please, I, I don't know what's happened, but I need help. Try and remain calm. Your systems are slightly damaged. I can't identify what your rank was, either. Looks like you're suffering from cryogenic-induced amnesia. What? W what are you talking about? You must have been part of Vitruvius, tasked with destroying the cube. Damn. The escape pods must have brought us both back to the origin planet. That life suit you're wearing, you can manipulate the cubic structures with it. We used the same design to destroy an extraterrestrial object that was on a collision course with Earth. You may not remember, but if you listen to me and do as I say, we may actually make it back home. Do you understand me? I... I don't know what the hell is going on, but... Just tell me what I need to do. Okay. I've detected a human distress beacon coming from the peak of the structure you're in. Your signal is weak because of this blasted sandstorm. I can't lock onto you. That beacon is above the storm. If you can just make it there, you should be clear. If you rendezvous with any other survivors, I should be able to use my teleporter to extract us all and get home. Right. Okay. I think I can do that. Orange and cyan! Orange and cyan, as far as you can see. Ah. Uh, the mid-2000s color scheme. We were- they were all about it. So the sequel has gotten very textury and lighting-y. The flatness is all gone, which is neat looking. This looks fantastic. While still being probably relatively simple to... Like, relatively cheaper to kind of put together. So the cube was destroyed in the first game. We're still continuing the story from that. There was like some sort of cube alien thing. It was gonna collide with Earth, got blown up by the protagonist. And now we're here. As a different character. I think they ind indicated that we're on the source planet that the cube came from. And I don't know if the prologue happened before this or after this. Where we're on the surface of the planet. Dying, seemingly? Like, did we wake up in here? Saved? Or is that going to be the outcome of all this? I do dig the lighting. And those little textures everywhere. The cubes are wet, I guess? It's a we kind of weird. They're very worn and wet. I'm not entirely sure what to make of the texture and what it means for, like, habitability and use? Or why there would be streaks everywhere, like, higher up? Is it just moisture? gloves you are wearing to change the structure around you. You should have access to the launch pad function, co-colored blue. Try placing one on any white cubes that have a frame using your left glove, then stand on it. I can only pick one, huh? You pick one side and you left click it and... Oop, yep, we're good. Jesus. I wasn't expecting that. You better get used to it. It may just save your life in here. Listen, I'm losing signal because of the storm. Keep climbing upwards. Contact me if you find anything strange. Oh, we're going back to this. Hello? Can you hear me? God, what have I got myself into? Alright, we're going back to the narrator character that we keep losing contact with. Okay. And maybe tell the person before they jump on it about, about this, like, OSHA infuriating uh, health hazard before they step on it. What's that? Tarp? Looks like a material tarp. I think this is probably a tutorial setup. Oh, you're probably supposed to land on the tarp most of the time. Oh yeah, that's the goal. So they're just making sure we get it. Got a strong case of the of the uh, the first person video game itis. 
I like to I like to walk around sometimes and just imagine what it would look like in order to make your character's first person perspective look like this with the two hands and then just walking around like that. It's it's kind of amusing to think about sometimes. I wonder if I can interact with these red cubes using my right hand glove. Red? Excuse me? All right. I think you can't move them around by slots anymore. There we go. So in the last game, you'd click on one of them and they'd all three of them would stick out at varying distances with the one you, you clicked on being the one that stuck out the most. They kind of an auto staircase. These ones just go full out at the moment. We'll see if they iterate or not. Should I expect secrets? That's what happens when you right-click on a wrong surface. Some sparks pop out. Oh, crap. Let's create ourselves a little platform. Anything back here? I think there was like secret walls and stuff in the last game, but I don't know how much I should expect that. Especially now, we're like in tutorial land, more or less. Hello. Uh, I've, I found something. Oh, still no signal. Just touch it. It's probably safe. You've got mega cancer. It's like double cancer. It's cancer squared. Extrude function. Code colored red enabled. Recommended action. Place red cube on white panel. What the? Why would these be here? From for a moment. Oh yeah, just at that exact moment, that panel actually looks red now. But it's very orange otherwise. I'm curious about that. Place red cube on white panel. Let's see here. Uh. Oh, I got the placing power. There we go. So we're starting the game with the power we ended the first game with. That's promising. You can press E to change energy. I was using the mouse wheel a moment ago. So I started with blue and I gained orange. I refuse, refuse to call it red. Um, no. There we go. I liked the part where they added that stuff because it, it once once they added the manually placing of uh, the manual placing of of panels. That's when the first game started feeling like it had puzzles. As opposed to, I don't know, kind of like paint by number instructions was kind of what it felt like when you, when all the elements were already in place and you just had to click on the right ones. It felt like it was really necessary for the game to add this kind of mechanic later. So it looks like I can only add one of them. So I need to be able to stop myself like this so I can then move a panel like this. There we go. Why'd you put your hands down? Is it story time? This game is all about the uh, orange and cyan, isn't it? Look at that. Based on that aesthetic, I would I would kind of I'm just gonna put my bet in right now about the idea of what if the if the game ends with a. Like a space laser. A vertical space laser. That's how orange and cyan sci-fi movies usually try to establish how that something's important and climactic. Oh crap, come back down. Actually, no, go up. Is there anything down here? No. Just some pretty alright looking metal textures. We've got elevators. Is 
Oh, yeah. Ooh. Well, this could get interesting. Okay, I'm gonna guess blue there, red there, and then you just ride it across. Most likely. But you. We're doing stuff that's close to, like, the end game already from the last game. You're manually assigning positions, you're moving things around. That's when things got interesting, although we don't have some of those powers yet, like the rotate the entire room color and stuff like that. So we'll see. I remember, what other colors were there? There was the one where- there was the bounce pad color, there was the pillar color, there was the rotate that whole chunk of the room color. I think there might have been another one, but I'm not sure. Where, where do you go? That's where I just came from, you dummy. I'm just- I have my eyes out, open for little secret spots, but I don't know where to look- where to expect them, necessarily. Millie? Can you hear me? Emma! Reading you loud and clear. How are you doing? Making progress, I think. Good. Listen, I wanted to ask, what do you remember before waking up? I don't. Not really. I think I was heading towards a job, a dig site in Scotland. I was in a helicopter with my team. And you don't remember what happened? No, I don't. Are you interrogating me, Emma? Because it sure as hell feels like it. Emma? Damn it, this stupid thing. I best continue. Whenever I'm given a character that loses... Let's try turning this on real quick. I think I'm having some issues. Whenever I have a character that like disappears in and out like that, I always just assume that they're doing it on purpose. And, we'll say, and then I, we'll see afterwards if I'm being proven wrong or not. I'll, I'll often assume that they're intentionally being opaque by conveniently losing uh, signal. But, you know, pretending to. While actually being able to watch the whole time and stuff like that. No. Okay, nope, come back down here. The, the whole wall moves. Let's take it the extra height you need. screwing with me a little bit. I, uh, I think I could be crazy. I could be crazy, but I think that, oh, it's two separate sensitivities. Weird. I think that, uh, move, change, turning on V-Sync actually changed my mouse sensitivity, but I'm not sure. I could be imagining that. All I know is I was, like, whipping around and I was losing control a little bit. Probably want you back down, yeah. Why did I pick that side? I'm just making the jump harder, potentially. Is that chapter two down? First elevator was a chapter transition. I actually have no idea what the scope of the campaign length might be. Chapter 3, House of Leaves. Oh, another type. Ah, there was the one that generates blocks. I remember you now. Interesting. It's like the structure itself can duplicate and grow. Ta-da! I assume we're in tutorial land right now, because despite the fact you can manually place, there's definitely a paint-by-numbers aspect. In particular, the last- the entire last zone, all the- 
wall panels were orange and all the slanted panels, the diagonal panels, those were all uh, blue. There was no real op reason to ever change. Kind of an, it was kind of a no-brainer the whole time. We'll drop you on that, and then when it retracts, it'll give me a staircase. Sort of def before I even know what I'm going to do with it, I'm just de facto turning these into the right colors. But we'll see. So we can generate a cube here. I don't think I can move them, can I? No. It's all based on how the environment interacts with it. Uh, but I can cl I can plop a cube a cube there a cube. I've done it. Let's just retract you real quick. There we go. Hmm. We can bounce you around. Is that all I need really? Just extra height? I think that was it. Orange and cyan. Alright. What does the target sign mean? Do I have to, like, hit a thing? Aha! That's what the, exactly what the target sign means, is you have to hit it open. That's a mechanic. That's a new one. Okay. Things you have to hit. That's an interest. that's a different goal than just getting through the room. What do I do with you? Launch you over? I kind of did that just because, but didn't actually have a goal for why I was doing it. Oh, hey. Yeah, it's got... It's, we'll see. I'm, I'm gonna... I'll cut it some slack for now, because I think this might just be tutorial land for a while, but... I can definitely just tell what I'm supposed to do without even seeing what the puzzle is. And I'm just, I'm just wondering... How long... It'll be like that, and when it, like, when, when does it become reasonable to be, start becoming impatient with, with the puzzle design? Actually, going outside into non cube land. Emma, can you read me? I'm reading you. Are you all right? I've come across an exterior space. The storm has cleared up, and well, there's life here. There's water and plants. That's unexpected. This doesn't look accidental either. The structure of the space, the organization of it, it looks purposeful. It reminds me of my husband. <laughs> In what way? Oh, he, um, he works with plants. You should move on, Millie, before another storm comes. Agreed. Speak soon. The art design's generally beautiful so far. This is nice. Although I'll always get a chuckle out of the orange and cyan association to the point where it's literally next to each other in the level. Can you hurt yourself on this? It's just, it's basically, it's functionally a solid bar. But like, they literally put it right next to each other. It's like, that contrast. Never forget. Okay, 
very dark. Oh, chapter transition. It's a very tall building, whatever this is. That I'm exclusively going up in. Chapter 4, Lost in Transmission. Oh, we're getting green power. Now I can make the cubes. And I can get triple cancer. Jam it in there. Detach function. Code colored green enabled. Recommended action. Place green cube on white panel. Incredible. She's starting to get into it. She's like, now I am the god. I have the power. Are you a little secret? A little dark spot? No? I haven't found one yet, so I don't actually know if they exist or not. But there was like illusory walls in the previous game. <laughs> that in its own way, I suppose, is also following the Ratman template a bit. My goal might just be to climb up. Oops. Ah. Gotcha. So now we're we might be starting now. That required some reasoning there, not just do the thing on the thing. Millie, I've been monitoring your position. Your suit readings show that you've gained quite a bit of altitude. Does that mean I'm nearly at the top? Not quite. These structures, all paths should lead to a central core. If you get there, we can figure out the best way to get you to the peak. How do you know all of this? We trained for a long time, Millie. So what do you think these structures are? Well, we know they have internal machinations and seem to perform tasks with no need for external input. A cybernetic system of sorts, reacting and adapting. The gloves were built to change that, or at least divert its functions temporarily. But what's their purpose? All I know is that we had to stop that vessel from colliding with Earth. The structure you're in, God knows what they're used for. Anyway, let's focus on finding that beacon as soon as possible. Story's kind of on hold so far. I don't think it's gone. I don't think it's advanced since we re it was revealed that we're on the source planet of wherever the thing came from from the first game. What is going on over there? Um, there's three panels. But... Why? Like, is there a, a goal I have, necessarily? Can the cube go through the panel, I wonder? It cannot. Interesting.
There we go. But you're probably supposed to be there. I really forgot to expand that. Physics! What? There we go. So far, we're building a lot of staircases. Let's see here. Does this all? Oh, is this all I need? Yes. Okay. Uh, 